Hello and welcome back to NAS Compares and today I want to talk about the best Plex NASs of the year so far. I want to talk about $500, $1,000 and $2,000 dollars or pounds, give or take, and what's the best for you right now. So I've already covered this subject on the other YouTube channel recently about what is the best NAS right now for a Plex Media server. Because right now you've got to take factors like transcoding, you've got to take storage, fidelity, and everything that goes with a Plex Media server on a NAS that you want to make sure you get the best for your money. And that's why I've picked 500, 1K, and 2000. Now the last time I did this was about three months ago, and currently two of these options have not changed, the first two, but the last one has been usurped by a new device. So let's talk about the best NASs for a Plex Media server, starting with under 500 pounds or dollars, give or take. So the first one is the WD NAS, and I know I don't really talk about them much on this channel or the uh, uh, Fan TV's YouTube channel, but the WD MyCloud PR2100 is by far the best two bay NAS out there if you are looking for Plex Media server abilities alone. As a NAS, it's not hugely awe inspiring. Though it does three or four things very well indeed. It's like Drobo, like that. But when it comes to being a Plex Media server, it does that better than any other two bay. And largely, this is due to the hardware inside. It features an Intel Celeron CPU inside there, but it is a fantastic CPU inside, much like on the DS916 uh, Plus. I believe it might even be a Pentium, um, even. If I take that back, it should be in the comments. Um, now, this device here not only features 4 gig of DDR3 memory and a great CPU with a transcoding engine, but moreover, it gives you the ability, hello kitty, it gives you the ability to access, do you mind not showing your butt to the camera? It gives you the ability to access that transcoding engine with Plex. Most NASIs do not give you that ability to access the transcoding engine on the CPU. They force you to use raw CPU power to transcode files in Plex. The WDPR2100 does not make you do that. And the price point of this device, I think is about three, 350 quid, maybe a fraction more without hard drives. And you know, compared with the Synologies and QNAPs out there, it gives you the ability to have a dedicated transcoding CPU, as well as the ability to do more and more within Plex, because it is pretty much designed for Plex. And things haven't changed in the last six months since I first mentioned it, because not only is the transcoding engine on it perfectly suitable, but it also has certain other features that other two bays don't have. It has dual LAN ports on the rear. It's got dual PSU ports on the rear. So you can actually attach two PSUs to the rear in case one fails and you have a drop in service if you have it far away. On top of that, on top of the dual ports on the rear, you can enable link aggregation from the NAS side rather than rely on the device uh, on your router or switch to do it. And the device has got LEDs, um, full uh, fan control on the inside and a user interface that is quite user friendly. So that is why it is my under 500 pounds or dollars Plex media server pick for two bay. But let's move up to the next uh, rung in the ladder. Next we can talk about 1000 pounds or dollars. Again, give or take. Um, what is the best NAS you can get for that money? Now, earlier I was thinking about the likes of the DS918. I thought that might stand a chance, but the problem with the DS918 is not only have they gone for a lesser CPU compared with the Pentium on the original, something WD didn't do, but on top of that, that CPU doesn't let you harness the transcoding engine in the same way the WD did. So, moving forward from that, for my under 1000 pick, I would say the TVS682 or the TVS471. Either of those two, it's a draw between them, one being harder to come by than the other. Both of these two NASs are four bay NAS devices. Both of them feature an Intel i3 dual core CPU. And again, this CPU lets Plex Media, the Plex Media Server application access the transcoding engine just like the WD. But unlike the WD, it has a whole host of features and applications readily available and open to you. I'm going to wait for this cat to try and get out my lap. Ready uh, applications open to you immediately from the off, meaning that not only can you do everything from Apple Time Machine backup and normal NAS applications and virtual machines, but as a Plex Media Server and indeed surveillance server, it is ideal with transcoding enabled and that CPU really keeping things moving and eight gig of DDR3 or four memory, depending on which of those two models you go for. It is definitely for under a K, the best NAS within that price point out there if you're looking for a Plex Media Server. But 
there is one tier higher. And the only reason that the QNAP before the, the QNAP we just spoke aren't in that top tier isn't just because of the price, but because of two kinds of uh, 4K media file, H.264 and 265. Now 264 is an older compression technique of media with 265 being a more refined and easy going uh, codec. Most of the ones at the £1,000 price point in the NAS range for Plex Media Servers and Plex Media Server Transcoding will not support H.264. I know it sounds like it's the older one and it should be easier, but it's 264 that's the problem, not 265. So once we move up a gear, we can talk about the brand new entries for the list. Because in my previous video, I said the best possible um, Plex Media Server NAS out there for just under 2K was the Synology DS3617XS. But this has now been beaten by QNAP. And that is with the TS877 or 1277 or 677. They're all in the same series because they feature a Ryzen CPU. It's a chip from AMD uh, and the Ryzen 7 is a truly astonishing chip. It transcodes everything. There is nothing I could chuck at this device that it wasn't able to play. And I mean in and out of Plex. I chucked the most dense 4K media you can imagine at Plex. And it transcoded like that. It not only did the CPU let Plex access the transcoding engine on that CPU, but on top of that, it did it without the NAS blowing its top and ruining all the other applications in the background. Do check out my video of the TS877 there via YouTube, or check out the NAS Compare article where I do a breakdown of transcoding on the TS877. Just look up NAS Compare's 877 transcoding. It's all there, all with the graphics and the CPU benchmarks. But those are the best three NASs right now as a Plex Media Server for transcoding. So once again, it is the WDPR2100. It is the uh, QNAP TVS682. And finally, at the top, the QNAP TS877 minimum. Those are the three to go for. There should be links in the description at the bottom, as well as links going towards NAS Compares to tell you more with more breakdowns about this, as well as the reasons for my choices. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, don't forget to click like and subscribe. This video is very new. I'm sorry, this channel is very new, unlike my other YouTube channel, and I just want to grow it and cultivate it as much as I can. So please do click a like and subscribe to let me know you're supporting me. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. Say goodbye, kitty.